Well, Jerry, the program uh, is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, but I know you and I have uh, in the past noted that uh, really it's, it goes back much further. Yeah, it, it does. A uh, hundred years ago, mm -hmm. in 1920, the practice court began by that name, uh, Justice uh, James P. Alexander. Mm -hmm. uh, he was asked by the university to set up this course. President uh, Samuel Palmer Brooks had apparently uh, visited uh, a medical school and he had seen how medical students were taught. And they were, of course, taught theory, you know, the, the human anatomy and all that. But he also saw that they were taught clinically or hands-on. They, they were literally doing and being taught to do what doctors do. And President Brooks came back to the university and talked to the folks in the, in the law school and, and said, you know, I think that's the way legal education ought to be. As a result of that, he asked Justice Alexander to set up a program like that. Uh, can you imagine a surgeon who would not learn how to operate in med school? You go out and practice on your patients and kind of learn it on the job. Can you imagine <laughs> doing that? Well, the same thing with the law is what Justice Alexander thought. Why inflict on your poor clients the misfortune of having a lawyer who doesn't know what the heck he's doing? Why doesn't that lawyer know? Maybe that's the job of a law school. Justice Alexander started practice court with the thought in mind, of course we're gonna teach the legal theory. Of course we're gonna teach you to think like a lawyer. Of course we're gonna take a step further than that and teach you some law that you need to know. But we're gonna go even further than that. We're gonna teach you how to use that law to represent your client successfully, particularly in court. And so he called it practice court. And that was the, the official origin of practice court. But Baylor had really been doing that already. Practice court had essentially been going on, not by that name, since 1857. I found uh, a remarkable passage uh, in, a, in a biography of President Rufus Burleson. And I found this a number of years ago. I, I want to read it for Please you, Brad, you, Jerry. Uh, because I, I just, when I, when I saw it, I thought it was astonishing. In 1895, at the Baylor University graduation, President Burleson invited a lawyer by the name of James Jeffries to speak. And in his graduation address, he described his law school experience. And you don't see this kind of thing written of often. Our professors believed in the practical application of the principles they taught us. And we soon had organized moot courts where cases were tried. There was a good deal of floundering, of course, in the beginning, but it was not long before we were fighting mimic battles with as much seriousness and interest as we have ever fought in the real battles of life. I, I think you could say that about practice court today or at any point since 1857. I. Uh remember uh, we had been out of law school for about nine or ten years and uh, tell us about a call that I made to you. The law school was looking for somebody to come and help Lewis Muldrow teach practice court. The notion of teaching in practice court was something I never dreamed of uh, ever ever and uh, that hooked me and one thing led to another of course. We, we just uh, I, I think hit it off and seemed like we could work well together. Jerry Baylor Law School as we both know has been dear to us because we have a plumb line uh, that we have adhered to always and that's that uh, we're not here just to teach the law as though we're some type of graduate school. We are a professional school and we send our students out at graduation and on to licensure with the uh, understanding that uh, 
they are in a profession that is intended to serve and that must serve and they have to have that uh, passion in their heart to, to reach out and to, to make it happen for their clients and uh, we have always as you and I know been so proud of the fact that uh, Baylor Law School is known as the law school where when we uh, graduate our students that uh, they're ready to go. I don't know how to rank uh, PC directors and faculty in terms of uh, intimidation, uh, where they rank on the intimidation scale. It seems as though someone who had uh, Judge Wilson always insist that they had it worse than anyone else. Yeah. You know, it, it's the same that you hear really of all the practice court experiences. It was the hardest thing we've ever done and he made it impossible and this and that. Uh, it's it's just the nature of practice court. Uh, I'm sure the, the, the students uh, now would be astounded to hear it, but I was absolutely terrified of Mad Dog, as we called him. He was scary and he was tough. He was the real thing. I mean, he was a trial lawyer of decades long experience. Uh, he had tried hundreds of cases. He was absolutely fearless. It made you feel good by the end of it that you felt like you had learned it from somebody who really knew what he was talking about. When you come out of Baylor Law School, your tenure is probably marked by who was your practice court professor. I was marked by Professor Mad Dog Dawson and uh, I can remember cross-examining somebody in one of our little mini trials and Je Professor Dawson was watching and he goes, no, 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 that, that's not how you do it. And, and he took over my cross-examination. Whether he meant to strike me in the heart or not, the fact is it did. And the fact is, I, I, I took things a little more serious after that because I was going to show him I was going to turn out to do something good. Uh, I think he really cared for us, uh, but I think he felt like it was his job to make us grow up and, and be real lawyers in a real courtroom and taking care of people in real situations that they face every day. Well, I was pretty terrified when I started practice court, as I think most students are. And I remember on the first day, the professor came in, you know, a little bit late and was just icing us, I think. And I thought, I might spontaneously combust. I'm, I'm that nervous. And, um, and then he came in and I, I did not spontaneously combust. I remained right there and got through the first class and realized, okay, maybe I'm going to survive this thing that is practice court. I ended up really loving practice court, but it was definitely something I was, you know, pretty anxious about going into it. So coming back to the law school as a Jaworski fellow and getting to work with the students is absolutely a highlight for me. I can see in the students' faces and in their level of preparedness that they are trying to rise to those high expectations. I think that the program is just as rigorous as it ever was. The only way to learn how to be a trial lawyer is to practice being a trial lawyer. And that's what Baylor does and what the practice court program does. What I learned at, in practice court is the one thing that you can control is your ability to outwork your opponent, to be more prepared than your opponent. And as a result, uh, it's allowed me to win trials that I probably wouldn't have. The reason I love teaching practice court is because I very much regard it as a calling. I regard it as the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Now, sometimes when you hear people talk about making a difference, it's because everyone feels warm and fuzzy about it. And I can promise you our PC students do not necessarily feel warm and fuzzy about the experiences they're going through it. But we're very blunt with them on the front end, telling them why we are doing it and that for many, not all of them, but for many of them, this will be the hardest thing they have done up to this point. But it is not going to be the hardest thing they will ever do. And we are preparing them for that. When we get students in practice court, they are in some cases mere months 
from becoming practicing attorneys. And that means that they will be facing very real stakes. You will have people who've been injured and need your help, who need a marriage unwound, a business wrapped up. And I think law schools make a mistake when they make that last year easy. If anything, it should be ramped up. And that is a core philosophy behind practice court, that you should feel and understand what real world pressure is going to be like so that you know you are battle tested. That's all part of being a lawyer, whether you're in the courtroom or the boardroom. So we let them feel the discomfort of intense scrutiny. We hear from judges all the time that they can tell Baylor lawyers. And I think it's because we ingrain a certain way of doing things that we believe show respect for the court as an institution. I think Baylor's practice court program uniquely reminds lawyers how to lead. We need that so much in our society right now. And I think that as we go into the next century of practice court, what we will take from it is not only generations of good trial lawyers, but of lawyers who understand and respect their commitment to society, who are ready to lead. And my goodness, we need that more than ever. It's demanding. It's unrelenting, and it's the finest training ground for young lawyers in the world. When you complete that program, when you conquer practice court, you're part of a special elite club. And to me, it's been the privilege of my professional life as a lawyer to be able to teach practice court. It's been great to be a part of the practice court program. I want to congratulate Baylor Law School on maintaining this tremendous program for 100 years, and I hope that it'll be maintained for 100 years to come. Practice court is not particularly fun when you go through it, uh, but I think it's almost a universal experience. When our students, uh, cross the stage in particular and it hits them for the first time that they did something really really hard yep. that they they and others complained about and thought they could never do and worried and fretted about it and it was hard it was maybe the hardest thing they'd done in their lives they feel a great deal of pride mm -hmm. at having accomplished it and and when they get that sense of pride and they go out in the real world, they have a great deal of confidence Indeed. that when it matters for a real client, they can be successful at it. And, and to me, that's kind of the legacy of practice court. Mm -hmm. The student who doesn't mind a real challenge, in fact, a student who savors a challenge, can't wait to meet the challenge, that's the kind of young person that we get. And when people like that come in the door with the approach that we use, uh, you can't help but turn them into successful lawyers who actually do good in the world to help their clients. When you type or write Baylor Lawyer, it's of course a capital B, but it's also a capital L because it's not just a descriptor, it's a brand.